the RTX 4080 reviews are out, and AMD released new performance numbers in both rasterization and ray tracing. How will the AMD 7900 GPUs compare to the 4080 and 4090, and which one should you consider buying? Let's get into it. The RTX 4080 reviews are out, and the performance figures are very good. In comparing the 4080 to the 4090, you can see that the 4080 performs very well considering it has only 60% of the shaders of the 4090, and as such it is consistently second best in the benchmark charts. But the more interesting comparison is looking at the generational uplift over the 3080. At 4K resolution, the 4080 is 49% faster than the 3080. At 1440p, the 4080 is 38% faster than the 3080, and at 1080p, the 4080 is 28% faster. At resolutions under 4K, the performance uplift of the 4090 over its predecessor in the 3090 is similar. However, at 4K, the performance uplift for the 4090 is so much better due to all those extra shaders. From a hardware perspective, the 4080 is a great generational upgrade over the 3080. It has 12% more shaders, 46% higher boost clocks, and 6 more gigabytes of additional VRAM. And for performance, at 4K, you get a 50% increase over the 3080. From the specs and the performance, this thing should be a bestseller. What's not to like? Well, there are a few things. Let's start with the obvious. The 4080 is just too expensive. I've shown in my previous videos that the historical trend of NVIDIA's small, medium, and large die size GPUs, and the 4080 is using a medium sized die. Contrast that to last generation where the 3080 used a large die size and the medium die size was used in the GPUs from a 3060 Ti to a 3070 Ti. The die used in the 4080 is just 379 mm squared, which is smaller than the die used in the 3060 Ti to 3070 Ti GPUs, and those GPUs were priced in the $400 to $600 range. To put it into perspective, if you put the 3080 Founders Edition alongside the 4080 Founders Edition, you can see that the die size of the 3080 is huge at 628 mm squared, while the die size of the 4080 is only 379. That is a significant difference in die size. So Nvidia went from a large die size and a GPU at 699 to a significantly smaller die size and they raised the price by $500. In what world does that make any sense? If we compare last gen medium sized die in the 3070, that die is actually slightly larger at 392 mm squared versus the 4080 die. So the medium sized die GPU this generation is now $700 more expensive than the medium sized die GPU from last generation. That doesn't make any sense. Moving back to the 3080 comparison, even the circuit board with the 3080 is highly dense and properly sized, while the circuit board in the 4080 has a lot of empty space that is not utilized and is way oversized. Even with additional VRAM, the higher cost of the die due to TSMC being a ton more expensive, and with Jensen's healthy profit margins, this GPU at its absolute most should be no more than $899. And if you believe the high price of the 4080 at $1199 is only temporary until the RTX 30 series stock sells out, then don't buy it. And tell everyone you know. Tweet about it, blog about it in forums, Facebook, whatever platform works for you to not buy this GPU since a massive price drop is imminent. The pricing of the 4080 is nonsensical. Well, at least it's nonsensical until you understand Jensen's master plan that he revealed to his investors. The 4080 is also physically too large. For an energy efficient GPU, why does this GPU need such a large cooler? It's efficient enough to use last gen's 3080 cooler. Why not use a smaller circuit board and smaller cooler for lower overall costs? It's as if they put the absolute minimal effort to bring this GPU into the market. Next, the 16 pin power adapter is atrocious. They could have designed this to be the best looking power connector ever. They just had to make the power adapter long enough and hide that three connectors behind the motherboard tray on the back side of the case or even down into the power supply shroud. Nope, you get a short connector and you get to stare at that ugly configuration with the power adapter connectors in full view in your case. Nvidia is too cheap to provide a longer adapter on a GPU that is priced over $1,000. And now we have a class action lawsuit underway. I love the user error blame game that has started. 
Nvidia put out a statement to Gamers Nexus and said, Our findings to date suggest that a common issue is that the connectors are not fully plugged into the graphics card. And even though Nvidia did not specify user error, they will get every tech media outlet to jump to that conclusion and say it for them. But the tech media should be asking the follow-up question, what is the cause of the connectors not fully plugging into the graphics card? Could it be the design tolerances or the manufacturing tolerances of the connector that makes insertion force highly irregular and inconsistent versus the previous 8-pin designs? What does NVIDIA have to say about the variation in insertion forces? And a statement from NVIDIA that it is 50 cases worldwide. Well, it's 50 more than on the 3090 Ti, which also used this connector. And it's 50 more fires than you had on any other high-end GPU you ever released. This new connector seems rather fragile and not anywhere near as robust as the multiple 8-pin power connectors they replaced. This will take some time to sort out. Let's see if NVIDIA takes responsibility for this connector or just ends up blaming its users. I'll wait for the dust to settle on this one. Now AMD released some new performance numbers for its 7900XTX and the one that it ignored in its announcement in the 899-7900XT. How will the 7900XT and XTX compare with the 4080 and 4090? Taking the data AMD provided, we can see that they just put some numbers on what they previously showed at the announcement. Starting with ray tracing and the first game on the left, Resident Evil Village, they are showing 135 FPS without FSR. This is slightly lower than the 138 FPS they showed on their website. In the other three games, Dying Light 2, Cyberpunk, and Hitman, those are the same three games they showed at the announcement, except this time they put numbers on the FSR off values. Well, I did my pixel counting best when I provided those values for FSR off in my previous video. Let's see how I did. Starting with Dying Light 2, I calculated 12 and 24 FPS, and that is what AMD shows. In Cyberpunk, I calculated 12 and 21 FPS, and AMD shows 13 and 21 FPS. That's a rounding error. And in Hitman 3, I calculated 22 and 38, and AMD is showing 23 and 38. That's another rounding error. As you can see, pixel counting works. In my previous video, I took all the reasonable data that they had in the presentation to calculate the average improvement in native ray tracing of the 7900 XTX over the 6950 to be 68%. With AMD's new slides, the native ray tracing improvement is the same 68%. But the new data on the 7900 XT shows that the ray tracing improvement over the 6950 to be 46%. So the XTX is considerably better than the XT in ray tracing. In rasterization, in the data from AMD's announcement, I calculated the XTX to be 44% faster than the 6950. The new data provided by AMD shows an average improvement of 55%. I noted back in that video that Red Dead 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla brought down the average. And if I remove those two games, then I also calculate the same uplift as AMD at 55%. The new data on the 7900 XT shows that the rasterization uplift over the 6950 to be 30%. Again, the XTX is notably faster than the XT. So we didn't learn anything new about the XTX, but we did learn about the performance of the 7900 XT. Okay, great. We have the benchmarks of the 4080 and 4090, and we have the calculated performance of the Radeon 7900 GPUs. But how will AMD's GPUs compare to the RTX 40 series cards in both rasterization and ray tracing? Let's start with rasterization first. To do the comparison, I took the 25 game average from Tech Power Up and compared the performance of the 4080 and 4090 versus the 6950 XT. And we have the AMD provided data that compares the performance of the 7900 XT and XTX over the 6950. Starting with the NVIDIA GPUs versus the 6950, in 4K rasterization, the 3080 Ti is equivalent to the 6950. The 3090 Ti is 13% faster, the 4080 is 32% faster, and the 4090 is 64% faster. Adding the Radeon GPUs and the 7900 XT is 30% faster than the 6950 and just 2% behind the 4080. 
the 7900 XTX is 55% faster than the 6950 and is behind the 4090 by less than 10%, but it is ahead of the 4080 by 17%. So we see that the 7900 XT at near the 4080 performance level and the 7900 XTX clearly higher than the 4080 while coming up short against the 4090. What about ray tracing? For ray tracing performance, Tech Power Up has data for eight games. So I calculated the relative performance of the Nvidia cards versus the 6950. The 3080 Ti is 27% faster in 4K ray tracing performance versus the 6950. The 3090 Ti is 47% faster, and the 4080 is 76% faster with the 4090 a whopping 144% faster. The new ADA architecture really increased ray tracing performance this generation. Adding the AMD GPUs and you see the 7900 XT is 46% faster than the 6950, which is comparable to the 3090 Ti. The 7900 XTX falls short of the 4080 by less than 10%, but exceeds the 3090 by 14%. Keep in mind, this is AMD data and it could be optimistic. However, I can safely say that the 7900 XT will be at least as good as the 3080 Ti and up to as good as the 3090 Ti but the 7900 XTX looks to be firmly in between the 3090 Ti and 4080. And nothing gets close to the BFGPU 4090 in ray tracing. In my last video, I posted a slide showing how the GPUs would compare in TimeSpy Extreme. And with the new data from AMD, including the 7900 XT, I would not change those calculated estimates. I expect the 7900 XTX to be 20 to 25% faster than the 7900 XT in rasterization and closer to 15% better in ray tracing. The 7900 XTX will not catch the 4090 in rasterization and it won't catch the 4080 in ray tracing, but it is a lot cheaper at 999 and will offer the best value in this comparison. The 7900 XT is DOA and you can see my last video for the details. It is not a card I would recommend until AMD decides to reduce the price to $749 or less. I am hopeful that AMD could decide to be disruptive. However, if not, they may be willing to react to the market like we are seeing them do with Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Unfortunately, that could be well into next year before we would see any changes. The 4080 is another GPU that is DOA. It did not sell out day one. Nvidia knew it was not going to sell well at that price. They only made 30,000 GPUs for launch, which is in sharp contrast to the 4090. The rumors say that they have already produced 130,000 4090 GPUs. You should not consider the 4080 until its price drops below $900, and you can see my previous videos on why. So it really comes down to this. The 4090 is for professionals who make money with their computer or for those who just want the ultimate in high resolution gaming performance at whatever cost. The 7900 XTX is for those who want the best value in high resolution gaming this generation. And if $1,000 and higher is too expensive, you can always look to the previous generation GPUs. From AMD, you can get a brand new 6800 XT for just 515 at Newegg, and the 6900 XT can be purchased new for $679 from the store at amd.com. Those two offer better value than the 4080 or 4090. Unfortunately for NVIDIA buyers, a new 3080 and 3090 GPUs are priced higher than MSRP, and I would not recommend that route. However, if you are willing to purchase used, the RTX 3080 can be had for just over $500 as seen with some recent Buy It Now listings, and that offers even higher value than the XTX. Getting a 3090 at around $650 has value that is like the 7900 XTX. One trend I have noticed is that the prices of used 3090s have crept up since October. If I had to buy a 3090 today, I would place a cap of around $800 on it, since that is likely the new price of the 4070 Ti to be announced in January. The 4070 Ti will provide similar performance levels to the 3090, so you won't be any worse off from a value perspective. Plus, the 3090 has twice the VRAM, and you can get one before the holidays are over. Otherwise, just go for a used 3080. For me, I am hoping to have better luck at getting the 7900 XTX than I was at getting any high-end GPU at MSRP during the mining boom. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel. 
And let me know in the comments below if you're looking to upgrade with a last gen GPU or getting one of the new GPUs. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.